Hello everybody, today we're going to be looking at tracking a score and drawing that to the GUI of our game. This may seem like a very simple thing because we've covered drawing text and so on with menus in the past, but there's a few tricky bits and pieces that might catch you out if you're trying to do this, and it is a fairly common thing to want to do. So we're going to go over it and uh, make sure we cover um, all the important stuff and getting this to work with our game as it currently stands. One thing you may have noticed um, is the last video, uh, part 22, is uh, recent. You may not have actually run into the issues I demonstrated at the start when you go to full screen and um, some of the stuff like shifts out of alignment, but you're still going to want to follow through on the fixes in that video. The reason you might not have run into those issues is because a new version of Game Maker came out literally the day that video went public. Um, and that version actually changed the way the GUI works to make the GUI um, default to be the size of the application surface rather than defaulting to the size of the display all the time, okay? Um, but you still need to do things like drawing the black box over the, um, the edges if you want to go to full screen, um, and you still need to uh, fix the GUI to be the size of whatever your chosen resolution is for your game because otherwise if you choose to start in full screen uh, your resolution is going to be assumed to be the size of your display which would be one, for me 1920-1080 when the game is actually 1024-768 and you would still run into problems. Okay with that out of the way um, let's get into this. So a few things I've done ahead um, of this particular recording is I've replaced level 3 which just used to be that little death box with like a million dudes in it uh, with this level which is literally just a copy of level 2 just made um, quickly for time uh, rearranged the enemies a little bit uh, just to help us demonstrate the effects of um, some like the saving and loading and stuff we're going to do with our score okay um, I've also in game options uh, unchecked start in full screen so we're going to keep the game in window mode um, just because that makes it easier for me recording these videos frankly you'll have seen from the last part it's difficult for me to record um, when running the game like into full screen. You can leave it as start and full screen if you want, it won't make any difference. Um, we've already applied the fix we needed to in there to make sure that that stays consistent. The one other thing I've changed in this as well is when we run the game, um, you'll see we I've changed the text borders on the menu. So before they kind of had like a full outline and uh, now they just kind of have a shadow here. The reason I did that is I did it to make it be consistent with the text I'm going to use for the um, for drawing the score in the corner. I know it also seems kind of inconsistent with this, so it might change again at a later date. We're iterating. Um, you can keep yours however you want to keep it. I've reduced mine. Instead of like drawing them on all four corners, I've drawn one shadow um, offset to the right and down rather than what like doing draw text like five times for each one okay just to make it a little bit simpler and also to make it consistent with how we're going to draw our score text in a little bit again you you do that to taste that i'm just letting you know so you're not confused as to why this is different now okay <coughs> Alright, finally, sorry, I know there can be a bunch of stuff to talk about at the beginning of these episodes. I do try to cut it down as much as I can. Let's actually get to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to make use of our OGame object. And that's the object we made in the last part that is persistent and uh, persists throughout the entire of our game. We create it in our menu and it lasts through all of our game. It's really useful for doing things like this key press F, which is, you know, control and F to go to full screen. You might also want to move your restart function, your press R just to restart the entire game. Um, from O player into O game, it's a, probably a better place to track it. Or was it in O player? Uh, it might have been in O player. It might have been in the camera or something else. And, and this is my point. Like, it's, yeah, it is in the camera. So it's kind of hard to find. Um, so it might be worth moving those kind of things to O game. It is a good place for them. But what we're going to do, and it has nothing to do with this episode though, because what we're going to do is we're going to go into the create event and we're going to add a few more things in this. We're going to add what I believe is our first global variables. So I'm going to type a global, and you can see that turns red, and then a dot, and then I can just type um, a variable name, and in this case it's going to be kills. So I'm going to track uh, the number of people that we have pointlessly murdered in our horrible game about shooting people. Um, and obviously when the game starts up, global kills is going to be zero until we either replace that with a number from the game we've loaded or until we start horribly murdering people, I guess. Um, the next global variable I'm going to create, I'm going to type global dot uh, kills 
this room and that's going to equal zero as well all right uh, and that's going to be important for tracking how many people we've killed in a given room just for helping with um, loading and saving and that kind of thing you, you'll see how we use this later now what does this mean how is doing global kills equal zero any different to just writing kills equal zero well by making it global and you can see it turns it purple as well um, we can actually access this from anywhere, okay? So we don't have to, like, if we wanted to access it from outside O game, we don't have to write with O game uh, kills equal three or something like that, okay? Um, we can just write global dot kills anywhere in our game, in any script, in any object, uh, wherever we want, and be able to access this, okay? And that's what it's useful for. The um, reason I haven't demonstrated or shown this earlier is it's generally best practice wherever you can to not use them. Um, not all the time, like you don't have to upset, like oh, one mistake I think I've made is not using globals enough for things, um, and sometimes I'll bury lots and lots of instances in O game or a similar persistent object that I'm accessing from loads of different places and loads of different scripts always using with O game and stuff like that. If you're accessing a variable from like three or four different places, you might want to consider making it a global uh, rather than using it as a local variable that you always have to um, access a particular instance to read, okay? Another thing with global variables is because they exist outside of the scope of the objects and instances themselves, uh, they persist from room to room, okay? So not not just because this is a persistent object, but if I made this in any object, that variable would continue to exist even after the instance that made it has gone away, okay? Because it's completely separate from the instance in that regard. So we've got those two global variables, and I need one more variable in here, and that's going to be kill text scale equals one. And that variable is going to help us do some fancy effects with our text later on. Now I'm going to add another event into O game, and that's going to be, I'm going to click add event and go down to other and room start, okay? Um, so this event will trigger at the start of every room. Now you might be thinking, well how's that really much different from the create event? Well, remember that this is a persistent object, okay? So its create event is only going to run once in our menu when this instance is first created, um, but we want something to happen at the beginning of every single room, and so having a persistent object that's going to be there at the start of every room uh, is a good place for us to do this and to have a room start then okay and what we're going to do in here is type global dot kills this room uh, we'll make this text a bit bigger as well just to be clear kills this room equals zero okay so at the start of every room this value is going to be set to zero well how we're going to use this variable um, is we're going to every time we get a kill uh, we're going to increase kills by one and we're going to increase kills this room by one and then if the player should die um, that gives us an easy way to reset our kills to whatever it was at the start of the room so if our kills is up to three and our kills this room or, or sorry our kills is up to five and our kills this room is up to two then and we die to one of the enemies we can go back to three which we would have been at the start just by subtracting one from the other okay and just makes that kind of easy that's how we're going to use that variable Okay, so once you've got that in room start, the next thing I'm going to do is come to our enemy base object, okay? And go into the uh, begin step event, where we find out if our hit points is less than zero and we kill an enemy, so we know that an enemy has died. Just before we do instance destroy down here, I'm gonna type if instance exists, o player, o, uh, close brackets twice, open braces, and in here, what I'm going to do is type global.kills++, plus plus, okay? And uh, as you might remember, plus plus just means to add one to a variable, so it's the exact same as writing plus equal one or equals itself plus one, you know? Um, and that's all we have to do, so we don't have to reference O game in this because it's a global variable, we can just increase that by one. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is, of course, increase global.kills this room by one. And then the last thing I want to do is change kill text scale and um, the other variable we defined in our game to two. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw this text in the top corner that shows how many kills we've got and we're going to make it really big when you kill an enemy and then like shrink down so it has this cool kind of like expanding uh, feedback effect whenever you get a, you whenever you increase the score. Okay. Um, but that's not a global, so we need to actually access O game to do that. So I'm going to type with O game kill text 
scale equals two. Now you might think, well, why didn't I make that a global as well? And then that's I can access that from everywhere. Um, well, to be honest, um, kill text scale is really only going to be used inside of O game except for this one line um, when this one thing happens that we want to like like increase it by, and otherwise, like nothing else really needs to to track it or to have access to it. So it makes sense for uh, the O game instance to be responsible for that particular variable. I think uh, use your own judgment, come to your own conclusions, but I think it'd be best. Uh, I think it's best for it to work that way around. Okay, and also it just handily demonstrates the difference between how you manipulate a variable um, that's global and how you manipulate one that's local, right next to one another. So that's convenient too. Okay, um, so once we've done that, that's already got our enemy set up. So when our enemies die, they're going to increase that number, and that number is going to work how we want it to. Um, now we need a way to actually draw it to the screen. Okay, so in O game. We're going to add the draw GUI event, um, the same event that we used in the menu to draw text. Um, handy, as I've said before, because it allows us to draw things independent of where our cameras and views are and just draw directly to the display. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write a description for this one. I haven't written one of these in a little while. It's good practice, I guess. Uh, and just call this draw score. Okay, and if I click there, it tells us that that's what this is doing. Uh, if room does not equal our menu. So if we're not in the menu room and if our player exists, we want to check that, if instance exists, oh player, uh, let's pick this up because we've got quite a bit of code to write in here. Um, if the player exists and we'll also check to see if global kills is above zero. So we won't draw anything until we've got at least one kill, okay? I don't I don't want to see kills equal zero on the screen. I'd rather just see kills one or more. Alright. And then we we'll type kill text scale uh, equals max kill text scale times 0.951. Uh, okay, and that's gonna return the biggest out of either kill text scale uh, multiplied by 0.95, so a bit smaller and a bit smaller and a bit smaller every time, um, or 1. So as you remember in our enemy we set this to 2 when an enemy dies, and then it's gonna, every single frame, as long as we're drawing the score, uh, shrink its way back to 1. You could make an argument that this is better off done in a step event or something like that, but I'm just trying to keep things simple and keep things all in one place, because uh, you should generally avoid doing too much logic and maths and stuff like that inside the drawer events and leave them for just drawing, you know, uh, wherever you can, but it's not really a big deal. Okay, so that's going to reduce, this variable is going to determine the size uh, that we draw the text. Um, now before we draw text, the same thing we do every time we draw text is I'm going to call this handy script I wrote before, which is draw set text, okay, just to set up our different drawing functions. So we're going to set the color uh, as C black. So we're going to draw a shadow first. Uh, F menu can be the font. F a right for our horizontal alignment because we're going to draw it in the top right corner. And uh, F a top. That's the other one, okay? You might want to space these out. I'm, I've been very inconsistent with how I've done commas and stuff like that throughout the series. I do apologize. My coding habits are not the best ones. Uh, so <laughs> That sets up all of our text stuff for drawing. And now I'm going to actually draw that text. I'm going to type draw underscore text transformed. Okay, and that allows us to draw text uh, of a given scale. Okay, um, and because and it'll take our alignments into consideration as well. So it'll scale it kind of in the, the direction that we want it to. Um, so the X position, well, you might have remembered those macros we wrote before for our resolution, res W, etc. So res W is the width of our resolution. So we can use that as the X coordinate because we know we want to draw it on our GUI, which is the same size as our resolution, at the far right of our screen, uh, minus 8. And then it's right aligned, so it will draw it from that point to the right, okay? Um, and the Y position is going to be 12. These are magic numbers because it's just the quickest way to do shadows. Um, but I mean, if you if you really want to, you could do this through variables and changing those. But we're just trying to be quick and simple. So eight and twelve. You'll see why in a second. Uh, string. Uh, and so we now want the actual text that we're going to put in here. So I'm going to write string global dot kills, and that's going to take the number global dot kills, and it's going to turn it into a string. So as if we'd written 
like that or whatever if if we had 12 kills okay which is really really useful and then we can combine that with uh whatever we want to write after the number of kills so this will show the number of kills and then plus i'm just going to write a straight up string in here a uh, point uh, a space at the start importantly so there's a space between the number and the text uh pointless murders um and then a sad face i guess pointless murders i mean um then kill uh you might want to see down here we've got x scale y scale and angle still to decide for draw text transformed so the scale um in both directions is just going to be kill text scale it's going to go off the edge of the screen but kill text scale again and then the angle is going to be zero we don't want to draw it on angle or maybe you do up to you um i don't so <laughs> uh so we've got that draw line and then i'm going to set draw set color to see white uh, if you're American, you're saying you might want to write color or whatever you do, how you do you. Uh, either one works. Uh, draw set, uh, sorry, draw text. In fact, I don't even need to write this next line, sorry. Um, you can just copy, uh, draw text transformed again. Um, but this time I'm going to change both of these numbers to 10. Okay, so this one's 8 from the left and 12 down. Um, where is this one? Sorry, 8 from the right and then 12 down, and this one's 10 from the right, and then 10 down. So that means our shadow is gonna be cast uh, down and to the right, okay? Just the same as our menu is, all right? Because this one's our shadow, and then this one's the, the, the white text on top. All right, so I can run this now, and uh, that should uh, demonstrate our kills growing, okay? So if I just go to <coughs> new game, um, because God knows what's still going to continue right now, because I had to reset all this from uh, when I was setting up this code earlier. So let's grab the gun. Uh, run past here, read the sign, please don't murder anyone from the park ranger. Let's come into here, uh, let's gun down this guy, and you see up there, one pointless murder. And now if I run across to here, uh, let's uh, shoot that guy so you can notice there the, the cool little effect we've got coming in on this. Um, uh, if we die, if, we, we, if we're dead or our kills are zero, then it goes back. But you'll notice this is the problem. So we restart the game and we've got two pointless murders again over here because uh, we never reset it in any capacity, okay? So in order to reset that counter, uh, if we scroll up and go to the script section and find the kill player script, so this is what we call every time the player dies. Um, just at the bottom here, I can just write global.kills uh, minus equal global.kills this room okay so that's going to reduce our kills by the number of kills in this room so you'll find if we did that exact same thing again we'd go from two kills and then we'd die and then we go back to zero and it could keep going up all right and that pretty much just solves that problem now the last thing i'm going to do and i'm going to do it before demonstrating this i'm going to do the last uh important thing in here go to our player object what we're going to do now is make it so uh, when we load the game via continue uh, and when we save the game at the start of every uh, room uh, we save and load the number of kills so we're going to store it at the start of the room and load it um, whenever we select continue from the main menu okay so in O player in room start in the auto save section um, you'll notice our save system was really really simple we just wrote a single real number into this file which told us what room we're in but what we can do is just simply I mean, this doesn't stay super scalable and sustainable for long, but you can, if you just want to store another piece of info, just write it in afterwards. So we've written our room into the, the save file. I'm going to write in global.kills in afterwards. All right. Uh, and that's going to be at the start of every room, so it's not going to include any kills this room or whatever. Okay. Um, so then what our text file is going to look like, instead of just being one number, it's going to be one number, and then on the next line, the number of kills, okay? That's, that's how it works when you write things in using each function, it writes each one on the next kind of line from it, all right? So let's close that, and then in order to load that back in and not have a game like break trying to load in a thing with two, well, I suppose it wouldn't because it would still just read the first one, but um, either way, to fix our loading, let's go to O menu and step where we control the menu. Uh, let's uh, beef this up and come down to here with our menu committed, if we selected the continue option, um, we open this file for reading um, and we put 
the first real number that we come across into this target variable and then we close the file. So in between that, after reading that first one, very important, after reading that first one, we're going to set global.kills to equal file text read real file. Okay, so it's just going to get the next real number that it can find in this file and put it into global.kills. And that's all there is to it. So if I save that, run that now. Um, just trying to think the best way to demonstrate this. If we start a new game and I come pick up the gun, at the moment I say we're not drawing anything because we don't have any kills yet. Um, and let's kill like everybody on the second level. Um, if I can do it without dying. So let's come through here. Let's get you. Let's try not to die to this guy. He's actually quite hard. Ah, no. God damn it. Okay, so pretending I didn't die, we've got <laughs> three pointless murders. Uh, let's come through to the next level now. So we've got three to start with. Let's kill this guy. So it goes with the four, and maybe this guy as well. Uh, so it goes with the five, and then let's die to this dude. Okay, so we died to him. We had five pointless murders up there. Uh, we die, restart, three pointless murders. Okay, and then also, um, if I were to close the game down completely, run the game again, and select continue, we should go back to that level with three pointless murders, exactly where we left off. Okay, so it's saving and loading the info correctly. Um, at the start of each room, everything gets saved. Um, and if you die, we revert back to that position. Okay, and that's really all there is to it. One thing you might argue, I suppose, is that doing this kills this room stuff is sort of unnecessary. Um, whereby we kind of you know, take the kills and reduce it by this number. Because what you could do is every time you start the room, or every time you finish a room and you, you save the number of... Since we save the number of kills every time we uh, start the room, what you could do is every time you die, simply reload the file, and uh, access the file and load the, the kills this room back into, uh, uh, sorry, load the number of total kills back in, and then you wouldn't have to track how many you've got in the room and so on. Um, but there's a slightly more efficient, I guess, just because we're not constantly opening file, opening and closing files, and the less you have to open and close files, the better, in my opinion. And it's also just really simple. So, you know, alternate ways of doing things, if you want to do it that way, you can. Uh, nothing really wrong with it. Um, but this is just how we've chosen to do it. Okay, hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. This video and all the other videos I make are only possible because of the support of my amazing Patreon supporters, the names of whom you are seeing on screen now. A special thanks in no particular order to Bowser the Dog, Cody Hodkinson, Dan, Harold Guidry, James Grumley, Jason McMillan, Jason B, Kimo Savilampi, Mark Lintz, Matt Coate, Michael Ward, Mike KB, Nick Slabish, Owen Morgan, Patrick Guffey, Robert Churches, Rovan Darlin, Run, Seanathan, Stephen Hagen, Toby, TJ, Turtle Time, Zephyr Flame, and Zinan May. Thank you all for your support, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.